Getting it done, folks. Getting it done. Last uh, baby workout on icy, slick, snowy conditions here in Denver, Colorado. We're gonna talk about these shoes here in a minute. Uh, but first, and the workout. But first, a quick update on the meetup location for the the two to three mile shakeout run on Saturday. So we're still gonna meet in Central Park, but instead of we're not going to meet at the Tavern on the Green. We're going to meet at the Delacourt Theater, which is the location of Shakespeare in the Park. And the reason we're switching is because they're hosting a 5K race, I believe, at Tavern on the Green. It's really close to the, the finish line of the New York City Marathon, which means it's going to be crazy. Lots of people, lots of just a lot of situations. So we're going to meet at the Delacourt Theater. There it is on your screen. 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time uh, on Saturday for the two to three mile shakeout run. I believe, so the reservoir is about a mile, uh, is a mile around it and it's close to that Delacorte, uh, and I don't know if I'm saying that right as usual, but the Delacorte Theater uh, on Saturday. So I will be reminding you throughout the week that we are not meeting at the Tavern on the Green. Instead, new location, still in Central Park. All right, let's dive into today's workout. So we're going to talk a little bit about turnover, a little bit about speed, but first the 5280s from New Balance, the fuel cell lineup. Here we go. Sometimes you just nail your shoe decision uh, on a particular day, given the conditions. And yes, okay, I'm going to ask now, question of the day, what is the weather like where you live, wherever you're at around the world? I have found personally that transitioning between seasons takes a little bit of getting used to, like going from the spring temperatures to the hot summer temperatures. Um, it's just amazing how your body adapts. And today was one of those days where my body wasn't quite ready for the cold, the, the breathing, the cold air in. So that's the question of the day. What is the, what's going on? And like, I'm just like, what's happening in New Zealand right now? Or uh, South Africa, or like, are you, and for me, like Argentina, okay. I'm racing in Argentina in, um, in like three or four weeks. What's happening in Argentina? Are you, I believe you're transitioning to summer, right? So anyway, that's the question of the day, or maybe you're in Norway and it's starting to get real fierce up there. So that, there you go with that. Okay, today's workout, three mile warm up, and then six by 1K with 90 seconds rest. And the times for those K repeats, we're looking at 312, 315, 316, 311, 315, and 310 was the last one, my fastest. I feel good about that. And I'm not surprised because, again, going back to the weather, it took it took two of the K repeats before I felt like I was not frozen. Like I just felt like I was stiff and uh, and not not smooth those first two, especially the first one. So again, it's that adaptation and getting used to the weather difference here in Denver. So I feel good about the K repeats. Um, I was really focused on my form, especially the last two, just not fighting it, floating it, just boom, and that connects to New York City and uh, going over those bridges, okay? I don't want to fight the uphill at all, especially at the beginning, the first half marathon, just float the uphill, just nice and relaxed, just like, you know, pretty much throw the time out the window, just be as relaxed as possible, save as much energy as possible. And so that's what I was practicing, especially the last 2K repeats today. And just a quick reminder that uh, as the seasons change, wherever you live, you, your times might be affected. Whether it's you have to put on more warm clothing and you're breathing in cold air, like that, that impacts you just a little bit. Or maybe you're transitioning to really hot summer, summer temperatures with high humidity, that will impact your training as well. So um, just keep that like weather does make a difference in how we train. Okay, and before I forget, these 5280s, epic. Again, I nailed it because of this outsole. Look at that, look at that grip there. Not sure if you can see it. Really great grip on the ice and the snow. And yes, there is a carbon fiber plate. I, I haven't seen uh, pictures of what the carbon fiber plate looks like in this shoe. And I get, I'll just mention this is a mile racing shoe. It's designed for road mile races. I think you could take it to the 5K if you wanted. It's definitely a toe striker, very aggressive. Uh, it's, a, it's coming in at about five ounces. It's, I'm excited. I don't know when I'll, I'll ever have a chance to race a road mile race, but I would love to take this out in a race and just see how it does. But anyway, so great shoe uh, so far for me. 
Um, it's a ne it's a very aggressive shoe, very very niche shoe, if you know what I mean. Now again, back to today's workout, just to wrap this up here in the studio, is that um, I this two week timetable between Amsterdam and New York, I'm testing and you know a little bit of a mad scientist trying to figure out what the body needs, and so I'm not exactly positive if this six by one k workout was necessary you know not a major workout but it was a little bit of a stimulus i think i topped out at about i think it was i don't know i think it was about 170 to 175 heart rate and uh but again i just don't know if it's necessary to do it but i did it and we'll see how the legs feel tomorrow and the next day and the next day uh but i will say by the end and this is where the the title of the vlog connects is that my turnover felt so much better those last 2k repeats and again, you know my thesis, like I love tapering, but I don't like my legs to fall asleep completely in a taper. And this is just, it's such a bizarre situation with two, you know, two major races so close. Um, but that's why I did this today to keep that turnover going. And by the end, I felt straw, I felt upright. I felt like my arm carriage was very good. I felt like my eyes were looking forward. My knee drive was pretty solid, um, but I just felt in control of my running form the last 2k repeats and that's exactly what i wanted um in this little miniature six by one k workout all right so there you have it icy marathon workout leading into new york city in the 5280s from new balance um the vlog is not done I already asked the question of the day i'm off to maintenance for the body that's right epsom salt baths tonight but before that we're gonna go roll out in the gym stretch all that good stuff you know the drill come on and I'm calling an audible. All right, I've been filming a lot in the gym as of late. You know, the stretching, the pool, the sauna. Uh, so therefore, I decided to not film that because I don't want to film it every day for you. Instead, we're going to hone in on the stability disc. Why? Because somebody asked in yesterday's comments under the blog uh, what my routine is for the stability disc. And here's the deal. I do my best to read all the comments, but it's continuing because you all are amazing and there's so many comments now, it gets harder and harder to read them all and I definitely cannot respond to them all. I apologize. Like Even if I take 10 to 15 minutes to type, I, I can answer maybe 20 to 30 comments in that amount of time. So, uh, anyway, but I did see this comment about the stability disc, so let me show you what I do uh, to work on ankle strength for a runner. All right, here we go. Okay, so for this first one, you want to hold on to a wall or a post, and it's just simply ankle rotations. What it, it's called ankle ankle rotations, and so what you're going to do is ten ankle rotations uh, counterclockwise, so outward, and then ten clockwise, and then I switch to the other foot, and I will do ten the same thing, ten counterclockwise, ten clockwise, and I will go back and forth three times. So am I doing the math right? It turns out to 60 rotations uh, for both uh, total for both ankles. And that's ankle rotations, not too complex. And yes, like everything in the gym, usually slower is better. Just nice and methodical, not rushing it. Um, and this is really good for ankle strength. If you're good, if you're transitioning, tip of the day, if you're transitioning from the road roads to the trails, I would do this for a couple months uh, before even that transition begins just to get your ankles nice and strong uh, for the rocks and the roots. And I tell you what, I have not rolled my ankle bad, bad in, okay, I guess I did it about 18 months ago in a race, in a trail race. Uh, but I, I, in training, it just, it just doesn't, it doesn't happen. You know what I mean? So, okay, so that's the first movement. And for the second movement, oh, this is just, this works all the small muscles, tendons, everything, ligaments. So it's, you're working on your balance, basically. You use the uh, running motion to get onto the balance disc, and you just kind of come up like that. My left knee, you might not be able to see that, but it's up in the air. And then I'm just looking right at you, and I'm balancing, just balancing. And then over time, not the first time, probably give yourself two or three weeks of doing this. Hold it for 30 seconds for each ankle, three times each ankle. Um, and then when you get real, real solid, you close your eyes and it gets a lot harder because you're, 
your uh, perception of what's around you change. It's really fascinating, but that is just simply working on your balance in the runner's motion. So my left knee is up if my right leg and my right, if my right foot is on the disc and just boom. And then eventually you can work on uh, closing your eyes to work on your balance. Okay. And then just one more. So this is a new stability disc and I'm realizing that I need to put more air into it just a little bit. But the last one, um, it needs a little more air, but basically you're going to jump and I wouldn't recommend doing this movement uh, for a couple months after practicing with the, st uh, the balance and the ankle rotations. Uh, but it's just a jump, boom, on, and then you just, you catch yourself and then off. And then you do it both ankles 10 times on, whoop. And the goal is not to touch the ground once you, with the opposite leg that is landing on the disc. And then you hold it, that wasn't a good one. Uh, and then I'll just do one more, boom. And then hold it. And again, I need to put a little more air into this disc. Uh, it's just a little loosey goosey. All right, so there you go. Thank you for being here. Thanks for watching. That is the vlog for today. And uh, we're gonna toss it back to um, we're going to toss it back to two blogs, one on the right about strength training and then one on the left about uh, plyometrics, just starting to work on building that foundation as a runner. Okay, love you all. Thanks for being here. Another day, another day. <laughs> See beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.